Hey everyone, this is Mary Demuth, and this is Pray Every Day, where I pray through the Bible verse by verse. Um, we are going through verses from We Too, how the church can respond redemptively to the sexual abuse crisis. And today is another difficult narrative from the book of Genesis about Dinah. And so if you have some sensitivity to reading about rape narratives, which most of us do, um, just be advised that that's what I'm going to be reading. This is from Genesis 34, the whole chapter in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. It says this, Dinah, Leah's daughter, whom she bore to Jacob, went out to see some of the young women of the area. When Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, a prince of the region, saw her, he took her and raped her. He became infatuated with Dinah, daughter of Jacob. He loved the girl and spoke tenderly to her. Get me this girl as a wife, he told his father, Hamer. Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah, but since his sons were with his livestock in the field, he remained silent until they returned. Meanwhile, Shechem's father, Hamor, came to speak with Jacob. Jacob's sons returned from the field where they had heard about the incident and were deeply grieved and angry, for Shechem had committed an outrage against Israel by raping Jacob's daughter, and such a thing should not be done. Hamor said to Jacob's sons, My son Shechem is strongly attracted to you, to your daughter. Please give her give her to him as a wife intermarry with us give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves live with us the land is before you settle here move about and acquire property in it then shechem said to dinah's father and brothers grant me this favor and i'll give you whatever you say demand of me a high compensation and gift i'll give you whatever you ask me just give the girl to be my wife But Jacob's sons answered Shechem and his father Hamor deceitfully because he had defiled their sister Dinah. We cannot do this thing, they said to them. Giving our sister to an uncircumcised man is a disgrace to us. We will agree with you only on this condition. If all your males are circumcised as we are, then we will give our daughters, take your daughters for ourselves, live with you and become one people. But if you will not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and go. Their words seemed good to Hamar and his son Shechem. The young men did not delay doing this because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. Now he was the most important in all his father's house. So Hamar and his son Shechem went to the gate of their city and spoke with the men there. These men are peaceful toward us, they said. Let them live in our land and move about in it, for indeed the region is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters as our wives and give give our daughters to them. But the men will agree to live with us and be one people only on this condition if all of our men are circumcised as they are. Won't their livestock, their possessions, and all their animals become ours? Only let us agree with them, and they will live with us. All the able-bodied men listened to Hamar and his son Shechem, and the able-bodied men were circumcised. On the third day, when they were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords, went to the unsuspecting city, and killed every male. They, They killed Hamar and his son Shechem with their swords, and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went away. Jacob's other sons came to the slaughter and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, cattle, donkeys, and whatever was in the city and in the field. They captured all their possessions, children, and wives, and plundered everything in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me, making me odious to the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. We are a few in number. If they unite against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. But they answered, Should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? Mind if I pray for you? Lord, this is a thick story, a really desperately sad story with a rape at the center. And Lord, um, I, I'm just so struck by how, um, how Dinah's father, uh, a patriarch, responded as if it was no big deal. And it was only her brothers who stepped in to defend her honor and to remedy this terrible, terrible offense. And Lord, as I pray for the church, I see this a lot. I see a lot of church leaders who just want it to go away, um, don't want to talk about it, uh, will not acknowledge the trauma that has been done. And Lord, um, then there are others who are willing to step into the gap and to do something about it. And so Lord, I pray that those would be, there would be more like the brothers than those like Jacob, that there would be people that you would rise up and even rise us up to accompany and walk alongside and to help and, 
and to be agents of justice for people like Dinah. Lord, we have laws in our land about the crime of rape. I fear that so many times we have called it a sin and not a crime. And Lord, this is something for the authorities to deal with according to the book of Romans where we're supposed to be submitting to our governing authorities. And so Lord, give us the bravery we need as a church to report rape to the authorities. Also, help us not to be passive in our response to those who have been hurt, but to be active listeners and to be ones who will um, look to the justice system to try to remedy this terrible, terrible crime. Lord, forgive us for treating it as if it is no big deal, but it is a huge deal and it is a crime. And Lord, I know that you weep over all of this all over the world. We think it's bad here in the States. It's really bad everywhere else too. And so, Father, um, would you send emissaries of hope? Would you send um, people who want to see justice? Would you send uh, empathetic listeners into your church to love those who have been harmed by this terribly egregious sin and crime. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to Pray Every Day. And um, you can get this actually as an app, and it will help you to know when new episodes come up, which is obviously every day. But also there's a free um, written uh devotional on that app every day too. So not only will you hear me pray, but there's also a free devotional. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the iTunes app store or Google play and download it there for free. Have an amazing day and you are loved and I love to pray for you.